The internet feels like an absolutely essential part of my life these days. I use it to talk to my friends, watch TV, do work, check email, figure out the weather, read the news. You get it. It's pretty much everything. But only a little over a half of the world currently has reliable access to the internet and all of its benefits. So today, in collaboration with Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany, I want to talk about a technology that could help bring the internet to more people and places. Smart antennas. By 2030, the number of devices connected to the internet is expected to grow from over 27 billion to over 125 billion. This will include things like smart cars and factories, which need reliable internet to function. And while more people are joining the internet each year, still nearly half of the world is disconnected. This number falls to under 20% when you look at populations in the least developed countries. And in developing countries, the gender gap between internet users is growing fast, with almost 53% of men online, but only 40% of women. One way to bring internet to more of these people, connecting them with information and technology, is to deploy smart antennas. So what is a smart antenna? Smart antennas are essentially an array of many smaller antennas which are connected using intelligent signal processing software. That sounds cool, but what does it mean? It means that things like the liquid crystals in your LCD television are helping us to move away from giant metal antennas to things that can fit more easily and cheaply onto moving objects like cars and boats. But I am not an expert in antennas or liquid crystals or any of that. So I found someone who is to help walk me through the tech. I had the awesome chance to talk with Dieter Schroth, Merck KGAA Darmstadt, Germany's global head of one display and smart antennas. As you know, we are living in a time where we really experience a data explosion. Data communication is growing exponentially. It's doubling every two to three years. Uh, and it's doing this already for many years. And in order to ha handle this, this huge amount of data, we have to move to more sophisticated data transmission. And this usually requires going to higher frequencies. And if you go to higher frequencies, you have to suddenly direct the beam. You have to have line of sight. Um, so you have to see um, the sender and receiver have to see each other uh, almost. If you, you can maybe think about a laser beam, yeah, if you want to hit a target, you have to have a line of sight. And this is what um, smart antennas are able to bring now, that they can maintain this line of sight connection. And the smart thing about it is that you don't have to steer your antenna once. Um, you can always adjust it. So if you have to switch from one send station to another, or if you are moving around and have to maintain the connection, then you need a smart antenna, which enables you to um, connect uh, or maintain the connection uh, between the sender and the receiver. And antennas, I think they can do it. Uh, most um, known as a directional antenna is the parabolic dish mm -hmm. people use sometimes for TV. But you can imagine if now suddenly um, you're moving um, with this dish, you have to move this huge dish. You can do this manually, of course. Yeah. Or you can do it maybe semi-smart and, and using some motors and completed, complicated mechanics, but this is not really smart. So ideally you do this electronically in a flat form factor. And this is why um, we think smart antennas are the next big thing, at least whenever it's uh, required to steer a beam um, on a constant basis. So it boils down to this. Moving a big bulky antenna around is energy inefficient and slow. So smart antennas can change their internal configuration using liquid crystals to redirect a radio wave rather than having to move a big dish. So this makes them more energy efficient and much smaller. So what are liquid crystals? <laughs> okay, a liquid crystal is, um, yeah, I would say they, they are um, magical molecules almost. Yeah? Um, they have electronic and optical behaviors and uh, by applying a little voltage to them, they can alter um, the optical, their optical behavior and they can alter waves. And uh, this is the nice thing so that you can combine electronic steering together with optical changes. Yeah? The liquid crystal molecules, they actually they look a little bit like a cigar or like a pen. And um, they are electrical dipoles and because they have plus and minus, you can switch them. Mm. So. And now the, the wave, whether it's a light wave or the radio wave, hits the liquid crystal either in the direction uh, lengthwise or it hits it sidewise. And as you can imagine, for example, by swimming through a pool or crossing a soccer field, it makes a difference whether you cross it this way or you cross it this way. And the same is true for the light waves. And by changing now the liquid crystals, you can gradually change um, how the waves are 
um, manipulated. And, and this is the, the fantastic thing about liquid crystals, uh, at least the liquid crystals that we are uh, used to uh, use here in uh, A displays and now also in, in smart antenna applications. The configuration of the liquid crystals inside the antenna can be changed by changing the voltage. This means that you can change the internal structure of the antenna and the way that it will direct a radio wave just by changing the voltage. And these antennas can also work together in an arrangement called a phased array antenna. A phased array antenna, you can imagine that you have, instead of a large antenna, you have lots of small antenna elements. And you place these elements in a certain way that the waves which are sent by these um, this small elements are in some areas amplifying each other, in other areas they're erasing each other. So, and by this you can create a directed beam. I think there is maybe the best analogy is, is maybe water waves. Uh, if you if you throw a stone in a, in a pond, then you see waves ripple along in a, in a circular fashion. Yeah? Very easy to imagine. But now you imagine you throw in four or five stones at the same time. So what you now see is not just a bigger wave, you see a, a, a pattern of uh, stronger waves, smaller waves, no waves. And this is exactly what we do in, in, in the phased array. Um, so each stone, you can say, is one of these, these antenna elements, but you don't throw them randomly. You just put them in uh, a regular fashion so that you can really manipulate the waves in the way you want it and have this directed beam into a certain area. So when do we need smart antennas? Whenever there's a movement in either sender or receiver, then you need um, a smart antenna. Um, we can imagine in cars, in ships and airplanes, um, this is of course an advantage uh, to have um, mobile connectivity. Today we only have mobile connectivity in a car, for example, using cellular technology, which is usually lower frequency and it's also very patchy. Now I'm 100% ready to never drive again to get a self-driving internet connected car and just read a book while I move from place to place. And this is a reason why I love public transit but that all feels like kind of a selfish reason to like smart antennas. So I wanted to know if they could serve any more humanitarian purposes as well. In my opinion, is the most interesting application is um, that now new satellite constellations are being established in space. So what they are doing, they putting up new types of satellites into the orbit. And because these satellites are much closer to Earth, they are circling the Earth. They are moving. So. It, now you see, already we need a smart antenna. Smart antennas placed around the globe could help keep people connected to things like moving constellations of satellites that could help bring them things like internet. But what makes it so exciting is not that they're just much closer to Earth, provide much more capacity, much faster signals. The interesting thing is that they distribute their capacity almost evenly across the globe because Ooh. the satellite is tiny, right? It doesn't stop over New York or Frankfurt or London goes on. And with this, you suddenly have capacity available in areas which otherwise would be not connectable, at least not economically. Yeah? And there are certain areas that will never be. And suddenly you have this capacity basically all over the globe. And now you can connect areas, you can connect people that had no chance before. And now they can participate in the modern economy, which creates knowledge, which creates wealth, which creates health. And this is, uh, is quite fantastic. And we believe this is um, at least the most exciting opportunity. If it's the most profitable, we have to see, because at the end, it's also a money issue. But it's quite exciting to offer at least a chance to, to many of, of those people that have no connection or possibility whatsoever at, at this moment. Smart antennas are already starting to be deployed around the globe. And I think it's really cool that they could bring the internet and connectivity to more people. So you can learn more about smart antennas and the Always Curious initiative by visiting Merck KGAA Darmstadt Germany's pages in the description down below. They've got a pretty cool smart antenna game where you can play around with the redirection technology to get a sense of how to move a message from one place to another. And you can also check out their sustainables page to learn more about how they're using everything from smart antennas to recyclable packaging to try and help push forward innovation sustainably. As always, thank you for watching and remember to go forth and do science.